Hey, my name's Ali Ross, I'm from linuxnewbieguide.org. This tutorial is all about installing software in Linux. This Linux that I'm using is a version of Linux or a distribution called Ubuntu Linux. As you can see, this is Ubuntu uh, here. Now, to install software in Ubuntu or most other Linux distributions, there's a few differences you have to know about, first of all, before you, uh, if you've just moved over from, say, Microsoft Windows or Apple Mac OS. The principal difference is when you're downloading software uh, for your uh, Windows or your Mac computer, you typically go to a website, you type in the address, uh, you, you look for the program, or in fact, you can get a CD, stick it in your drive, download the software, install it using a .exe file or a, a, a package of some description in Windows or Mac OS. With Linux, um, in most distributions, especially the one I'm going to show you right now, which is with Ubuntu, you'll find that you can install software simply by clicking on one icon from the desktop and the rest of the installation, the downloading, the configuration, it's all taken care of for you. So basically you can just click a couple of clicks and you're away. And that's how easy it is to install software in Linux. So uh, let me just show you how to do this in, in this Ubuntu Linux desktop. We can see the applications menu and also take note of the system menu. Now I'm going to go and show you two tools, but first things first, let's go into the add and remove programs, which is down on the left hand side of the applications menu there. Um, you'll probably be familiar if you're using Microsoft Windows, if you come from that background, to add and remove programs in the control panel. The control panel add and remove programs commonly is only used to remove programs. A lot of times these days, you'll hardly ever have an opportunity to go into control panel and add software into your computer. In Linux, it's very different. It really is for adding and removing software. So for example, you can see this piece of software here, the add remove programs or applications dialog in front of me is very straightforward. You can get sort of categories of software down the left hand side. Um, so, for example, if you want to install a game, you could scroll through the list of games. There's also a popularity rating, which is updated on the right-hand side there. And if you click on a typical game, it gives you the um, information. It gives you the name of the game and the, uh, the sort of description about it. So, <clears throat> uh, you can also search up the top in the top right here. Say, for example, I wanted to install a piece of software called Abbey Word. I could just tick that box there apply the changes, put in my system password, and that's it, it, it install. But that's really all there is to it. That's how you install software. Where is all this software coming from? Well, the people who make Ubuntu, Canonical, and also the people who make Debian and lots of other distributions as well, hold something called repositories. And I'll go into this in a little bit more uh, in a second, but basically a repository um, is just a massive big um, store, if you like, online of all the sort of um, software that you could imagine okay and this is the sort of main pieces of software which are available for the ubuntu linux system as you can see there are literally hundreds of them if uh, you wanted to go into further detail or if you wanted to go in and do some more um, stuff with packages you can have a look in the system menu for that under administration and then under Synaptic Package Manager. So if I just click on there, the first thing it'll do is ask me for my system password. So I just pop that in there and wait for it to start up. Now you can see it, it, it's more detailed in, uh, in what it's got as in menus along the top here and also um, the sort of package groups that you can use. You can see there's communication, development, editors, there's all sorts of different names like Multiverse and Universe, which we'll get to in a moment email and so forth. So there's lots and lots of different categories in here where it was much more sort of restricted, much more basic in the add remove programs uh, in, uh, package. So basically, um, if, you if you know the piece of software which you want to install, you could just type it in the search and up comes everything related to Abbey Word. So I could just click there and then on this little box here, I could say mark for installation. That was just one click there, mark for installation. 
they'll then tell me all the other pieces of software it needs to install. And usually these are just what are called small library files. They're nothing big, but it's, it's going to show me here that it's going to install Abbey Word Common, Abbey Word Help, which I'm assuming is the help program for this Abbey Word software, which is, by the way is a word processor. Um, a grammar checker, a math view, and so, and so on. There's a few other library files here you can tell are denoted by lib, so, sort of like what you'd find um, DLL files to be in Microsoft Windows if you know what they're all about. Anyway, you, you don't have to worry too much about them. The moment you press mark and then click on the apply button, it will install that software for you. So there's a couple more steps than there is in the add remove programs. Um, dialog but this allows you to fine-tune which exact piece of software you want to install and obviously you can do the same for uninstalling pieces of software you can unmark a, a, a particular tool so I'll just cancel that and click the wrong thing um, right click there unmark and that would unmark it from installation okay um, you can also make um, updates to your system just via this tool here um, so just by pressing the reload button you can find out which updates for your system are required so we'll just do that now if I press on the mark all up upgrades button it can tell me that all of this software is ready to be installed it's basically gone onto the internet found out that the software on my system is out of date slightly and will update it all for you automatically I'll just take a second to confirm what I'm saying here basically in Windows land or Mac OS, say you downloaded a piece of software like Firefox, for example, and a new update came out. You'd have to either go on the Firefox program, uh, Firefox website, or maybe there was a little pop-up box that says there's a new version available, click here to update it. In Linux, much more straightforward. You simply just have to reload this or click on this icon up here, which is the update available icon and that's it once you've clicked on there it'll update all the software for you all of that sort of stuff is done for you so you don't actually have to go out to the website download the new version remove the old version upgrade it and so forth it's all done for you within the upgrades um, system here so it's great great way to do it and really really nice and easy once you get to grips with this principle that basically you don't have to go out on the web and start looking for software, it's really nice and easy to install software. In fact, 99% of the software you will install in Linux is basically all going to be through a system like this. So you don't have to go off, find it on a website, find a CD. Um, I'm just going to step you through the, the, the steps very quickly here for um, installing that software, Abbey Word in Synaptic just to just to clarify the steps you can see that these packages are going to be installed I'll press apply it downloads them I've got a reasonable broadband connection here and as you can see it doesn't take very long to download them what it'll do once it's downloaded them it'll install and configure those software packages which we just got once it's done that the software will then appear in the applications menu ready to go and that's all there is to it. Very very simple way to install software. Remember however there are certain companies who make mainly proprietary commercial based software sometimes it's mainly the software you would either pay a fee for or they don't like to be attributed with the sort of open source community. If that is the case, you'll find that their software is on the, on the particular website and is not given into these repositories which are provided by the distribution vendors such as Ubuntu, Canonical and, and so forth. So um, let's just confirm that this Abbey Word has been installed. If we go to, I think it's in Office, and in fact there it is, Abbey Word is installed. And that's it, that's all I had to do to install Abbey Word. So there's two ways of installing Abbey Word. First, in Add and Remove, and the second with the Synaptic Package Manager. So that's how you would do it in Ubuntu Linux. And just to give you an idea, um, Ubuntu Linux, uh, Debian, Linux Mint, and quite a few other distributions of this nature all use the Synaptic Package Manager or similar. However, there are different package managers for different distributions. If you use a Red Hat dis distribution such as um, Red Hat itself, um, Fedora Core and so forth, you'll find that there are different package managers for all of those. So be aware of that, but they're very straightforward and simple to use much in the same way as this. 
The difference with those is you'll find that there may be less in the way of software available through the repositories.